Mm. It never stops. Mm -hmm. And it hasn't for five years. What, what, so what they're using it already on the public, that alone. And they know it, it can make people very depressed or excited or angry mm. um, or apathetic uh, are, or tired. Are these working all of these technologies right uh, now. Are, are these working on, on what, the, the, the brain activity frequency or, or what, what's going on there, do you know? Well, see, medicine for many years, unknown to the public, on, again, the higher levels through the military-industrial complex, uh, they realized a long, long time ago that every little chain in your body and every little message that's carried in your bloodstream or through your tissue to different types of cells um, work because each cell, and there's many kinds of cells and tissue in your body, each cell has its own vibrational frequency. Mm -hmm, yeah. And it's no different from a radio. A radio has an oscillator, a coil that oscillates a vibration. And when you tune in and make it vibrate at a certain frequency, then the incoming signal, if it is the same from a station and they both match, you can then reinterpret the original signal that's been sent out. Mm -hmm. The body works the same way. And so your cells which receive the messages are vibrating. And when the, the particular proteins and amino acids are coming along in the, in the right chain, towards those cells, they'll vibrate at the same frequency and, and it's pulled out towards them, it attracts them. And that's how it gets its food nourishment and its messages on very, very low energy pulses. So the military was very involved in that because they could literally rewire a person. Mm -hmm. They could stop your heart. They could uh, give you high blood pressure. They could give you low blood pressure. Um, they, could do, they could basically alter the language um, the healthy language of anyone's body by understanding the language of, e of each type of, of tissue with its own specific frequency vibration. Mm. Um, the same thing with thoughts. That's how basically uh, they can implant thoughts in people's minds too. It's a, a language using various electrochemical stimuli remotely, which mm. will, um, uh, your brain will interpret what you think is your own thoughts, but it's not. And they've got papers out on this now, meaning, again, it's obsolete. It's, uh, it's old technology. Hmm. Do, do you know if they've conducted any any larger experiments with, with these kind of things, let's say, over a, a war area to, you know, disperse the enemy or whatever? Do you know if there have been big, larger tests on this actually implemented? Not only on any enemy, but what we've got to realize is we are all the enemy. Oh, yeah, you are, yeah of that, course. That's the trick yeah. here. <laughs> I mean, for instance, for all the, 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 the declassified information mm. that every Western country has today about using their own troops for experiments, for using prisoners in, in federal prisons yeah. for experiments, yeah. and even so much as in 1948, to use a combined ex effort with the U.S. and Canadian um, government giving acquiescence to the U.S. military to spray over Calgary and Canada for weeks at low level mm -hmm. with a, a specific substance and then follow the, hist the health histories of all the people of the city mm -hmm. down through the years mm -hmm. to find out how this uh, caused various kinds of cancers. Mm -hmm. This is all declassified stuff. See, we are all the enemy to the to the elite. They have no nation. They're international. Yeah, it's a tribal. Well, it's it's so more. They use it. Mm. Uh, it's more like and, a small. Um, uh, even Norwich in England, uh, the, the, the the British Navy uh, released uh, tons and tons of gas from just off the ocean and let it blow in towards the uh, Norwich, and they used cadmium, mm. one of the most carcinogenic agents you can find. And then they studied the health of the people down through the years to watch how they died off and how many, etc. Mm -hmm. uh, we're all the enemy. Yeah. Now, the HARP technology was used openly because they admitted it in the British newspapers in Gulf War I. Hmm. And you saw thousands of the, the, the troops coming up and giving themselves up, totally stunned, completely stunned. Now, they hadn't been under any artillery barrage and yet it was captured, and then Britain admitted that it used uh, harp-type uh, electromagnetic pulse frequencies on them for 24 hours. Mm. And mm. they were not only confused um, and stunned, uh, um, 
they had to be led because they couldn't uh, think for themselves that their minds were knocked out of action altogether. Hmm. Oh my. Um. The people of Maine in the U.S. were the first people that admitted so far that the harp technology from Alaska was used on to study as a people yeah. to see the effects on it. Hmm. They had a lawsuit in against the federal government for doing it. Really? Yeah. Okay. Huh. Yeah. Um, you, I mean, if we were to return a, a little bit to to you know the um, some of the technologies p- potential out there. I mean, there are uh, you know of course a lot of uh, chit chatter about also the uh, the de- you know development and and. Uh, uh, you know, consequent implementation of, of viruses into into you know the natural environment. Uh, uh, yeah. There are still talks about you know the the bird flu even a, a, what, what is it called H five N one various uh, uh, you know dangers that that of course is is you know uh, related to to this virus. But um, do you think that there because I know I'm asking this also a little bit because I know you you were uh, recently on on. Um, uh, Dr. Deagle's show, Bill Deagle, uh, and I know that he mentioned this am- among other things, of course, in in one of his talks uh, that I watched uh, ab- about a potential, um, uh, d- you know, actually letting out a virus either in, I don't know, 2007, later or 2008, maybe something like that, uh, either if it's uh, H5N1 or if it's something other, I, I don't know. Uh, do you have any ideas or even theories about this? Do you, do you think that they will do this at some, at some point or, or not? Yeah, well, what is curious, what is very curious, very interesting, is that everything that you can find in the book of Revelations in the New Testament is being used. But mm. it's science that's doing it. Mm. They're, in, they're actually following it like a plan. Yeah. And everything from earthquakes, which harp can do, mm-hmm. to uh, to heat, cold, all these kind of things, to plague, um, uh, famine, pestilence, all can be done today uh, through science. In fact, it has been done mm-hmm. uh, pretty well on an ongoing basis for quite a few years now. Yeah. I mean, for instance, Monsanto not only has genetically modified our food, and it's not to help the, the, the plants, believe you me. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and you think about that and alone, and there's no outcry that your your staple needs water, food, clothing, etc. Yeah. They've gone for your, They've made war on your staple needs. Yeah. Yeah. And give you no say in it whatsoever. They just did it. Yeah, that's right. They're that. at war with you, and then then you go into. Um, uh, Monsanto's also altered different kinds of insects. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Now, now they admit it. I've got some of the patterns here. And, uh, for instance, a few years ago, we had a plague of ladybirds, ladybugs. Mm-hmm. And they were biting people. And I mean plague of them, a mm-hmm. real pestilence. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Canadian government came on, as you all said, oh, we don't know anything about it, and they don't bite, yada, yada, yada. Hmm. A month later, it got so bad, the Department of Agriculture came out and says, well, yeah, we did release millions of them, <laughs> uh, but they don't bite. And then a month later, they came out and says, well, yeah, they are slightly modified in different kinds there, but yeah, some of them do bite. So hmm. they're at a lot of this kind of stuff. They're giving us the, the build-up to the pestilences. Yeah. Because warfare departments, a long time ago, uh, since World War II that we know of, and this is declassified in a book by a, a Canadian reporter for the Toronto Star. It's called Deadly Allies, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and it's Canada's role in the, the, the military-industrial complex with bacterial and viral warfare, because mm-hmm. Canada leads the world, by the way, little old uh, pristine white snow-covered Canada, mm-hmm. the world, in this research. And... Um, uh, they, they, they've been going into biting insects, mosquitoes, and all kinds of biting insects were the ideal carriers to carry disease. Oh, really? So they breed special types of mosquitoes in Belzo mm-hmm. in Ontario. Hmm. And uh, and it's still on the go today. Yeah. From World War II right to the present, and they ship them down to the U.S., where it goes to Plum Island and different places mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, for the center of and, and the center of disease control. Good title, that Center for Disease Control. They, they control the diseases. Yeah, yeah. And uh, mm. 
so yeah, biting insects especially um, are their main form modes of carrying uh, coming plagues. And uh, isn't that also a kind of uh, theme very prominently within you know religious scripture, especially you know the Bible about uh, swarms of um, you know uh, grasshoppers or or you know different kinds of of uh, insects that actually come over an area and actually you know. Uh, l- yeah. Leave the country, country, you know, desolate and and totally, you know, a wasteland, basically, you know. Absolutely, and when you look at for the last 30 years, with the government intrusion, first giving out the bait of uh, various tax exemptions to farmers, then coming in with demands and then putting them out of business, mm-hmm. and now you have the big agri agri food businesses, Conagra, ADM, yeah, ADM is just Adam, you know, ADM. and. Um, mm-hmm. And all the big ones, uh, they now have decided, and they did in the free trade negotiations for NAFTA, uh, that they would put the major producers of uh, fruit and vegetables in Latin America. Mm-hmm. So they've basically destroyed most of the farming in Canada and the states. And so it'd be quite easily now to simply to withhold the food from Canadians uh, and release uh, pestilences here that would destroy whatever little is produced here. Mm-hmm. Very mm-hmm. simple. On a war. Be- What you have to do is, is look at uh, study military history, because it's nothing to do really. The, the, the part where guys are facing guys with guns and they charge each other—that's mm-hmm. only a little piece of it. Mm-hmm. Most of warfare is to do with economics, scientific strategy, mm-hmm. scientific weaponry, yeah. and you go after the basic needs of peoples. That's right. Yeah, definitely. And and, and uh, the bees—that's why the bees have been eliminated too. Yeah, yeah. How, how about that? Um, wh- what's your take on that? Is is that something? Are there still coming out reports on that, or or have this been resolved in 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 any way? How how's things? Oh no, they're been? just stunned. They just don't know. Okay. Just stunned. You know, mm. they, now they they could probably make a bee from scratch, uh, with, and uh, rearrange the genes and make it whatever kind of bee they wanted it to. Mm-hmm. But they just don't know what they're causing it. They're totally stumped. Yeah. Mm. And this is of, of obviously you know and and. A thing that consequently would would um, you know affect the entire uh, you know food industry or, or you know the food supply so to speak of of you know the <laughs> everybody that is yeah, and, and deadly allies is quite a, an interesting book mm-hmm. with declassified documents in the books all it's all from government declassified books uh, papers mm-hmm. uh, they, they they discuss every means to take down peoples and whole nations. And they discussed ways of uh, stopping pollination mm, mm. back in World War Two, yeah. and think tanks, and uh, and they also discussed uh, Banting, the great hero that liked to uh, dissect dogs to get his name in the history books. Uh, really, his main job was working for the military-industrial complex, and he came up with a, a kind of disease that is identical, if not the same. That's what we call mad cow disease, mm-hmm. and he wanted this to be uh, to infect every cow uh, and every animal in Germany to kill off their entire the protein food supply mm. in World War Two. Mm. There you go. They did the same things with channeling out little tunnels in the brain, and spongy form encephalitis, yeah. and those who would eat it. So it's it's mm. all it's old stuff. It's all military weaponry that's yeah. being used today. So th- this is ab- about um, you know the structure of of nature is is in itself is is falling apart because of this. Uh, I mean, so so this is a, w- a way to. Uh, I mean, we we talked about this this before, but uh, I mean there that is a question that we you know have to return to again and again to actually uh, you know consider it and ponder upon it. You know, in, in that fact on what the heck actually is going on and what the heck is the nature of these people who are performing it in a way. Um, you know, you can see it as you said earlier that this is so compartmentalized that people within the structures dom- themselves don't know what they are doing or what the consequences of what their work actually is going to be. But as you say, at, at I mean, someone <laughs> at the top, at least in that sense, are aware of the big picture and yeah. and you know, looking upon all these compartmentalized areas and see what's what's going on in that way. Uh, what do you think the the plan is from from their point of view? Are are they you know up to colonizing Mars or or the Moon or something like that to the where they can escape to? You know, <laughs> uh, I'm sure they 